Good morning. Welcome to Community of Grace this morning. We invite you all, if you are able to stand and sing our, our gathering music, Let Us Build a House. Y'all can have a seat, the whole crowd. Thank you, thank you. Um, last week, we started worship by reveling in the beauty of Hawaii, which I had just come back from. And we reveled in the beauty of the snow, which I came back to. And for the second week in a row, we are going to start with a note about Hawaii. Because on Thursday, the 18th of January, that is the anniversary of the day that James Cook first landed in Hawaii. Um, if you know anything of that history, you know it did not work out so well for him. Didn't work out so well for the Hawaiians either because the whole process of uh, imperialism and, and, and uh, awful capitalism and colonialism, and they ended up just having a culture really pushed down in so many ways. But as an accident of history, maybe an accident of power, on January 18th, 1893 is actually the day that the Marines took over and overthrew the Hawaiian government and the Queen was forced to give in on the same day, same anniversary. And so we start our service in lament for all those places and all those people whose lights have been dimmed by greed and power. We start by committing ourselves to doing better in our hearts and being aware of the people who are taken advantage of and holding our leaders accountable. And let's have a moment of silence as we encourage ourselves to soak in the Spirit's grace. Good morning, everyone. If you're able, please stand to join in the call to worship. Hello, sun in my face. Hello, you make the morning. Hello, you who spread sunshine into the windows of the wise and miserable, joyful and lonely. Hello, best preacher there ever was, dear star. Keep us, holy one from ever darkness and hold us in your great hands of light. Watch now as we start the day in happiness, in kindness.
And we welcome all those who are watching online, warm in their little houses. And now we share the peace of Christ with our neighbors.
So today's reading is from Zechariah. <clears throat> Open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed. Amen. So the word of the Lord came to Zechariah. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Render fair judgment, show mercy and kindness to one another. Do not oppress widows, orphans, foreigners, or the poor. And do not make schemes against each other. God continues, your ancestors refused to listen to this message. They stubbornly turned away and put their fingers in their ears to keep from hearing. But rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Israel. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious. Yet he, he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. I will remove the battle chariots from Israel and the war horses from Jerusalem. I will destroy all the weapons used in battle, and your king will bring peace to the nation. His realm will stretch from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Amen. forward and I think uh, especially Addie needs to be here because her shirt looks like the color of your uh, of the front of your bulletin there in the story that Miss Paula just read there's a funny part in there, but sometimes the, the adults didn't laugh at it because they thought it was serious, but I want to make sure you catch the joke in there. Because Paul had read, um, God told people, play fair and be kind and share mercy, especially to people in need. And then she said, some people did not want to hear that, and so they stuck their fingers in their ears. It's really hard to hear when you stick your fingers in your ears. Can you imagine doing that to your parents when they said, when they said, Hope it's time to go to bed. And you say, no, 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 no. Imagine if, if Addie, if, if it's, can you please set the table? Blah. Now, now imagine if you said that to, if God, like, if God said, James, share your blessing. And you said, blah, 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 blah. Or if, you know, if, if Simon and Desmond were like, you know, make sure to be kind to people who pick on you. And you said, I can't see anything. Yep. It seems silly. It se adults do it all the time. Adults do it all the time. Sometimes adults will be, they'll hear, treat people as equals, and adults will say, mm -mm -mm -mm. adults will hear, do not lie or cheat, and, and adults are like, I, I don't know what I'm hearing. I'll do what I want. I do what I want because I'm an adult. Now, part of what we get to do here in church, part, this part, but part of what we get to do is to help each other take our fingers out of our ears so we can hear God better. Because all, all of us like to do what we want to do. All of us. We always like to do that. But um, some people, you know, some people, like we all at some times, when we do what we want, we end up hurting our neighbors or being mean to people. Some people are especially silly and mean when they make schemes to be in charge and they brag about hurting people and they promise that they're going to take revenge. Some people have a lot of dirty little fingers stuck in their silly ears that only God can help. But all of us can do better to learn what a beautiful message God has. So to help you to hear God's message, even better and better and better, I want to introduce you to our new friend, Marie. Uh, Marie is going to help teach children's church. Uh, and that's, that typically is like age five to grade five. You know, it can, it can move a little bit on either side of that. And if there's older kids who want to help in there and help that process, that's great. Um, you can be a helper. You, if you're a good helper, you can be a good helper. 
Um, but others of you, you might want to stay with your, with your families and listen to grown-up church, and, and uh, we can do other teenage activities later, too. Um, okay, so we're going to pray for Marie and for us and for everyone who can help hear God's message. Hey, God, open our ears. Open our hearts to know your peace. Amen. All right. Y'all can go where you're going to go. Last week, we kicked off the year, the new year, by explaining the entire Bible in three sentences. That's all it took. Um, did, any, did anyone enjoy that? You figure out the whole Bible in three sentences. That's all it took. You got that? Okay. Okay, well, this week, we're going to take on God. We're just hitting the big ones right out of the way. We're going to start the year, Bible, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, uh, all that. Because I, th I think, I believe that most people in this room, more than most, most of us at least, um, most of you have moved past the idea that God is some old man in the sky with a big beard who shoots thunder at people, right, hopefully. There was a time, there, there was a time when little ones, that, that may have been helpful to have that cartoon there so that they could hold on to an idea. There may have been time that that was even useful, but um, there's also a time when you let that go. And when you let that go, the question is, what do you pick up next? And that next idea that you pick up, I, I don't know what it is, I don't know what you picked up. A, a lot of people, a lot of people, the next idea you picked up was, you're a terrible sinner and Jesus needed to die for your sins. Amen. Praise God. Okay? Okay? A lot of you are working through that right now. You're working through the parts of that, 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 how difficult it is to let go of what seems like it was ingrained in you. Some of you have moved past that, and by God, you're so happy. W wherever you are, I hope that that kind of idea doesn't hold you hostage much longer. But others of you, maybe it did serve. Maybe that served something for you at some point in your life, and then eventually you let that go. So then what do you pick up next? What should you pick up next to have a robust sense of love and purpose and creation and guidance and liberation all wrapped up into one little group? So for all of us at different places, how can we take one step toward relating to God as more peaceful, more merciful, more beautiful, more inevitable? Okay, so here's where I'm going to start. And in order to explain uh, that kind of God, I'm going to give you one sentence, and then I'm going to give you three sentences. So you can pick whichever one you want, one sentence or three sentences. One sentence. Okay, we're going to start with, um, has anyone heard of the comedian Pete Holmes? I just, one nod. Okay, I see one nod. Uh, I just learned of him a couple weeks ago. Uh, I don't know much, but I went to Wikipedia. Um, Pete Holmes had started out wanting to be a youth pastor, and then he joined a punk rock band, which is like a huge step forward. Uh, <laughs> and then he got into like acting and comedy, and now he calls himself, get this, he's a Christ-leaning hooray-theist. Like, hooray-theist. Hooray-atheist. Okay, so he's, so whatever that is, he's defined, hooray, I, I don't know what it can do there. Hooray-theist. Um, so given that, and given, I did a little scan of just the titles of his shows, I get the sense that sometimes religion pops up in his comedy work. Now, I have only seen 90 seconds of Pete Holmes, so if there's off-color jokes in the rest of his stuff, great. You can go listen to that and, and shame him all you want. I'm not endorsing Pete, but in 90 seconds, I know he has a new Netflix show coming out, and I saw one clip, and I thought, that belongs right here. That has to be right here. So Pete starts, he quotes the old road manager from the band ACDC, okay? We've already have headbanging over here. Thunderstruck. No, 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 no. Um, you know, there's a lot of songs they have that are very not church, church appropriate, like Dirty Deeds, Done Dirt Cheap. That was my college years with that one. Um, she was a fast machine. She can't, that one is totally not lyrics that we should sing here. But, 
So if you, if you know anything about ACDC, just picture, this is their road manager. His name is Barry Taylor. Picture how much debauchery this guy cleaned up over 30 or 40 years with ACDC, how much partying that would be. Okay, he, and this is his quote. Um, he said, God is the name of the blanket we put over mystery to give it shape. God is the name of the blanket we put over mystery to give it shape. So Pete Holmes, he takes this quote, and this is, this is the joke, right? You're not set up for a joke. But he said, here's his joke. He says, um, why did I not learn that in church? Which I guess is a joke because a lot of people learn irrelevant, boring, judgmental, bizarre things in church when they grow up. And I guess it's funny because a guy from, you know, that band sang Highway to Hell, and so many people, their experience of churches is about sending you to hell. But doesn't he sound so much more spiritual and wise and connected to that mystery? Don't you, don't you want to ask him follow-up questions and figure out how did he get there? How did his life fit in that pattern? But Pete says, why did I not learn that at church? And here's my response. And if Pete, if, if Pete Holmes' road manager wants to set this up, he has an open invitation to come and we'll do a conversational sermon on this. Calendar's open. Why did I not learn that at church? That is exactly what I want you to learn at this church. That mysterious stuff that takes time to soak in, that you can't fit on a checklist of beliefs. That is exactly the kind of thing, and this is exactly the kind of place where you are welcomed and encouraged and you are embraced to, to walk down those paths and stretch to new understandings of that. And hopefully stretching to new ideas about God will affect not just the ideas, but how we feel about spirituality, how we feel about our past, how we feel about our forgiveness, how we feel about other people, and how, we've, how we feel it, just our soul in this heavy, heavy world. How do we engage in this world? This, these ideas will change how we engage and how we interact with others and how we dig deeper. How we think about God impacts how we dig deeper into the way that this blanket is weaved into life. And inevitably, that means just as we let go of the old man in the sky, we will end up letting go of outdated or unuseful or broken or hurtful ideas. And when we do that, it is the most beautiful opportunity in our life to start thinking about new names for God new ways of thinking about all the things that make up that mystery. Things like who Jesus was, why he mattered. What is forgiveness, why it matters. And if you do that, I promise you that if you take up this invitation from Pete Holmes and from me, if you, if you start to question that stuff and let go of things, I promise when you start to, to pick things up, the first thing that's going to happen, could happen, has happened, is happening, some of you will get very offended that happens in good churches, more than bad churches. You get offended by new ideas of God. If you're new around here, I promise there's two things that I will do to offend you. One, sometimes I'm just a dingbat and I offend people. Amen? Mm -hmm. Glad no one was too loud with that. Um, but sometimes, sometimes my job is to kind of poke and prod and help you be uncomfortable in sensitive places. And I promise you, when you work through some of your spiritual baggage within a trusted community, through that discomfort, chances are you will find some measure of grace and excitement. Both of those. Whether it's taking notes in worship and following up with me, whether it's coming to Bible study or a book club, whether it's volunteering to teach our, our kids and then trying to figure out how to do that in, in honest ways, whether it's just listening closer to how the Spirit moves in our relationships, I promise God will start to reveal God's self in new ways. The mystery takes shape when we pay attention to that blanket. The way Jesus said that, he said, for the one who has secrets of the kingdom of God, more will be given. And the way Paul said that was, when I was a child, I thought like a child, but now that I'm grown up, I put away childish ways. 
The way ACD said that in a song none of you remember, it was one of those nights when you turn out the lights and everything comes into view. So does that explain God? No, probably not. Does it make you wonder a little deeper about God? Well, explaining, welcome to explaining God through the more wonder and, and explaining God through, through like entering into what would an explanation even look like? Okay, but I'm not done because we have not even touched on Zechariah yet. That's just the, that's just the build up, okay? Uh, and Zechariah, if you think that my first half of this sermon is like obscure, Zechariah is way less straightforward than me. Um, but I am going to summarize uh, his point in three easy sentences. I promise you three about what God is, or what God does, or what God is about, or how, how God works in life and in the world. Three easy steps. But since this is a funky book that none of you have ever read, maybe like three of you have ever made it all the way to Zechariah, because otherwise it just, like, the stuff before that, who can get through that? Uh, so a long time ago, some Jewish people in, in southern Israel, they were taken, some of them, across the desert and put in a new land, and they had to start over, start their lives over. Uh, they had to get new jobs. Their families were in stress. They had to try to figure out, like, all that I believed in God was wrapped up in that place. Now I have to figure out new ways to believe in God. They had kids. Those kids were a little separated from that stuff of, in Israel. They had kids, and their grandkids, they'd sit and listen to grandma's stories about being back in Israel, and the grandkids would say, so what? What? And so his history was being lost. And eventually, after 70 years in exile, those, some of those Jewish people that were over here, they were invited to go back and reform Israel. A lot of people turned that offer down because they had, their life, they had new lives set up. But some were intrigued, and they signed up to go rebuild the temple and to reintegrate with folks who never left, um, to rebuild schools and roads and city walls, and most important, to restructure the moral fabric of the land. And those people committed to this project of transforming their life and all their surroundings, that is who Zechariah is writing to. And you can imagine, if, you, if this was your project, some of you would be afraid or unsure. Some of you would get too caught up in new roads and new walls and not as concerned about new moral fabrics and ways of understanding yourself. And Zechariah, honestly, he says it in really weird ways because he's a prophet, but he's trying to guide folks into this opportunity to start fresh, to have a second chance at life. He's trying to guide folks to think about renewing their life and their community by holding on to the most essential things. He's not, he's not helping people solve problems. He's helping people think in ways about their core values that will help them solve whatever problems come up. So in all kinds of ways, Zechariah is guiding these folks in a once-in-a-lifetime, once-in-a-millennium chance at new life. Now, in your life, if you could start over, would you do some things different? Would you, would you do some of less of that, maybe hold on to this a little tighter? If you could take the wisdom that you've learned now and go back and start fresh, would you get in so many messes that you already, that you did? Hmm? If you could start over as a community, I think we, we would say, okay, no more of this imbalance, and we're going to tell better stories than the despairing ones that are overwhelming us, and, and we will find ways to be closer, united together as a people. If you could rebuild the whole world, wouldn't you remind ourselves of the best history to give us hope for the future? And that's not, that's not just Bible. That's our hearts. I mean, imagine in your life, some of you have been right here, you say, what would it be like, what would it take if I needed just one little aspect, get my health under control, all, all the little health problems. Some of you, you know, your, your great goal is I want to be able to get on the floor and play with my grandkids. One, one goal, okay? Maybe your goal is I want to be able to eat without guilt or worry. I, I want to be able to walk around the neighborhood without worrying about slipping on the ice. Wh whatever the goal is, imagine the work it would take to get from here to, to there. Zechariah says, I bet you could do it because you're not alone on this journey or any journey. Or take a harder one. Maybe this one's harder. Maybe it's not. Imagine what it would be like to get a hold of emotional stability uh, because you've been through a lot. Everyone in this room has had some kind of trauma, it's expressed itself as grief and hasn't always processed itself. 
What would it take to get through all of that? It would, it would take work to believe in yourself when someone has taken that belief away from you. Because you've, you've read you know, the books, you've met with the therapist, you've tried the meditation, and everything does something. Everything has worked a little bit, but what would it take to get a fully healthy relationship with your past and your present, who you are? Zechariah says you can do that because there's something guiding you the whole time. Or imagine what it would be like to take, try to get social stability completely back because we as a people have been through a lot and the threats keep coming. Sometimes we fall, all of us, I promise, you fall into the trap of thinking one court case or one election and that's going to solve it. Right? But will it? No. There's a lot more healing that needs to be done. I, I don't know what it would be like for America to, 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 to get through, but it would be collaborative, it would be deliberative, it would redefine who we are and what we're called together. Zechariah says we can do that. And in fact, you are doing that at every stage. We just need to do it better. So he's, he's leading people through these fraught waters, and he does it in three sections. One, God has been at work in your life. Two, God is at work in your life. Three, God will be at work in your life always. And how he does that, um, it's sort of three books smushed into one. In the first book, first few chapters, he reviews how God cares for the people of Israel. Now, he could have done a checklist and just said, Abraham, see that guy. Red Sea, see that one. Uh, King David, see that one. He could have just done a list. Deborah the judge, see her. Um, but he's a prophet, so he made a much weirder list of apocalyptic parables. It's kind of, if you read it, it's kind of like um, horror cartoons. Like, like some of you have seen anime, and it's weird. Now imagine that being more horror-filled. That's what apocalyptic literature is. Okay, so, so in our world, if you took, like we have our stories of our society, George Washington's cherry tree tells us about honesty. Abe Lincoln's four score and whatever, it tells us about, you know, how our, our world can always move forward after uh, <laughs> terrible decisions. Now imagine that in horror cartoons. That's the first few chapters. Um, God has been at work, and you may have resisted that, ignored that, okay, but the mystery behind all beauty and all love is unfolding still as part of your story. Two, the middle chapters, that last part that, that Paula read, um, it's probably written after these people coming back to Israel. They get home, home. They start working. They get into some conflict. They realize this project is harder than when they started. Uh, and they realize that all those problems of war and greed and division followed them. If you've ever thought on at you know, 9 p.m. on a Thursday night, I am going to wake up and change my life. What happens by you know, Friday? A lot of those same problems follow you. If you've ever done the thing where you're like, I'm going to move and start fresh, okay? Sometimes it's helpful if you're prepared, but a lot of times you get to the new place, same habits follow you there. These folks are finding that, and Zechariah says to them, slow down. God is still at work even in this conflict. Behind that danger of power, behind the, the allure of power, God is here with the humble and the peaceful. The mystery behind grace, that is part of your story always. And you're going to forget, but it's up to you. You get to come back and focus. Three, the last part of Zechariah. We didn't read something from this section because it's even weirder than the horror cartoons. This is where he promises that the future is one of redemption. What we are building with new life is not just change, but growth. It's not just growth, it's healing. Zechariah tells his people that God is a God of healing, not condemnation. And we've seen that in hints in our history. We can see hints of that now. But faith in God is not faith in what church you go to. It's not what beliefs you hold. It's not what you do, moral or not. Faith in God is about trusting the mystery behind healing and liberation and the freedom to be who you are, unburdened by brokenness. The mystery behind all restoration is alive and at work, and it will not stop working. So who is, who is God? What is God? I, I don't know, but the best definition we have for today's service, funky Zechariah, God has been at work, God is at work, and God will be at work. Amen.
We invite you all to please stand and join us if you're able in singing Let Justice Flow. This week, we begin the Super Bowl of Caring, S-O-U-P-E-R. You, maybe you saw there's a little football field over there. It's the extent of my arts and crafts ability. We will be collecting for the next several weeks uh, non-perishable food. We do this all the time at this church, but this is a little encouragement. If you bring in some boxes and cans, next week the children are going to make it into an arena, and we're just going to keep growing that arena. Uh, and so it goes from, goes from like Utah Valley football to University of Michigan football <laughs> stadium full of good food. Um, we can always respond to poverty with generosity, always. It's kind of an easy step for everybody. But um, that's not all we can do. So over the next several weeks, we're going to learn more about the causes of poverty in, in Salt Lake and around, around the world. We're going to learn what we can do as advocacy to change the structures that lead to poverty. But for now, you're invited uh, over the next several weeks to make a donation. And if you can do that next week, the kids will be having a, having a ball the next several weeks. Friends, if this family of faith has ever helped you know that you are beloved, or if you think we can do that for our neighbors, you're always welcome to make a donation in the basket or online. We thank you for that, and we thank God for using that for God's will. Surely children were made for the sweet. Parents were not made to leave. Surely this isn't how it should be. Let your kingdom come. Surely nations were not made for war. Or the broken men to be ignored. This can't be what you saw. Let your kingdom come here in my heart. And I will live to carry your compassion, to love a world that's broken, to be your hands and feet. And I will give with the life that I've been Surely life wasn't made 
were not made to forget. Surely faith without action is dead. Let your kingdom come. Lord, break this heart. I will live to carry your compassion, to love a world that's broken, to be your hands and feet. The life that I've been given, go beyond religion to see the world be changed by the power of your name. Jesus, your name, shelter for the hurting, and your name is a refuge for the your name holds everything I need and I will live to carry your compassion to love a world that's broken to be your hands and feet and I will give the life that I've been given and go beyond religion to see the world be changed. And I will live to carry your compassion, to love a world that's broken, to be your hands and feet. And I will give with the life that I've been given, to go beyond religion, to see the world be changed by the power of your Our prayers today uh, come from words that should sound familiar to you. God, who calls us all to beloved community, we have a dream. We dream with John the Baptist that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain made low, and the crooked places made straight, and the glory of God shall be revealed for all people to see together. This is our hope. This is the faith with which we return. With this faith, we will hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. And so we pray for those in despair. We pray for uh, Judy Sanders is hospitalized with the flu. We pray for Floyd and Marlene's grandson, Darren. We pray for all those names on our, uh, on our prayer list. And God, with faith in your power over our weakness, we will transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of community. And where we see glimpses of that beauty, we give thanks. We give thanks for Brooke and Cheryl's niece who had a successful surgery this week. We give thanks for James's sister who has a clear bill of health from her cancer. God who calls us to relationship, we will work together, pray together, struggle together, go to jail together, stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will all be free one day. And if America is to be a great nation, and if we are to move toward your dream of a beloved community, God, this must come true. This we pray together and with all creation through the words you taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, let's flip this over. Let's learn the song first so, so we, can, we can finish on our charge, which many of you know. But we're going to learn a new song to close ourselves out for the next few weeks. Um, we have a, a good singer rather than me to teach it.
And friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on.